Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here again. In this video, I'm going to follow up on the concept of how good is your ICC profile. And if you viewed my previous video where I actually basically compared the two profiles, one is the Canon canned profile that comes with your driver for the Pro 100 for Pro Luster Paper. And this is my custom one that I made in a previous video. You saw me create this with the Canon color management tool. And I showed that the two indeed are different. This one, the one I created, when you view it in a 3D viewer such as iccview.com, you can see the difference in my profile extended beyond the gamut parameters of the OEM one on about maybe 70% of the complete 3D color map and it indeed extended well below the darkest portions of the gamut that the Canon profile actually covers. Mine extended below that in fact as far down as you can possibly go. Now a viewer asked me if I could produce a corresponding matching profile for the same paper but using the Color Monkey software rather than the Canon color management tool along with the Color Monkey in order to you know read the uh, or scan the actual patches. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and make one strictly using the Color Monkey photo software and we'll go ahead and set it all up. I have paper loaded we're going to go ahead and use the XPS driver. I'm going to go ahead and copy the same name of the one that I made with the color management tool. I will add that this will be Color Monkey. All right, now we can go ahead and hit next, hit print, and we're going to go over to our printer driver. Make sure that we have photo printing, the correct paper size, the correct photo paper which is pro luster high and we're going to go ahead and undo borderless printing and we're going to click on color manual adjustment and pick none matching and then none okay the first set of patches are being printed right at the moment I will let them dry and then I will scan them and once they are scanned the software will produce a secondary custom set of patches. We will print those again using the same exact settings. We'll scan those and then the software will generate the final profile and then we will go ahead and load my profile against the Color Monkey profile. In other words, Color Monkey software generated profile and compare the two and we'll see if there are any distinct differences. If this one is better, in other words, if it covers a wider area of the 3D map or has a slightly higher gamut volume, then we'll declare this the better one. You will not see the difference in prints because you need to have at least a 15% difference in color or gamut volume between profiles for you to be able to actually visually see the difference. Sometimes you can see 10% even, even lower, but it depends on what area of the gamut map the newer or the supposedly better profile excels at. All right, so we'll be back when this whole process is done and we'll load up uh, the two ICC profiles up to ICC view and take a good look at them. Okay, now that we successfully printed the first set of targets or color patches, we're going to hit next. And of course, I've already let it dry, actually let it dry about two hours. So we're going to go ahead and begin to scan the first patch. Now the process is that you will set your color monkey to the calibrating and hit calibrate. I've already done that. So now we would go ahead and move it to the, to the reading position and we'll hit next. And we are presented with this facsimile of what the print looks like. We're going to begin to scan by pressing the scanning button on the side of the color monkey. Beginning outside of the first patch, which is this one here. And once you press the button and then you drag the color monkey across and let go of the button. Once you successfully scan or read the first row of patches, it will automatically move over to the next one and so on and so on and so on. 
If somehow you make a mistake, maybe stray outside of the path, maybe cross over to the other row accidentally as you are scanning, then you will get a red result. And that means you just simply have to rescan that particular row once again. And that should be all you need to do. If you want to see this actually visually uh, from a camera's point of view, there are plenty of videos on YouTube that you can look up and see how the process takes place. So let's go ahead and begin to scan the first one. I position my scanner just outside, in other words, right on this area here. Press the button and scan forward. And you do this, say, about two inches a second. Doesn't have to be super fast, nor do you have to really be very slow. As you can see, every time I successfully scan one set of patches, it automatically moves on to the next one. And when I will continue and finish up with the last one, and at this time we hit next. It's going to generate a custom set of patches that is totally dependent on the results it obtained while reading each one of those previous color patches. So it may differ. It's going to differ from profile to profile, depending on the printer, the ink set, and the paper. So let's go ahead and print. And remember, you have to make sure that your settings are all the same. We have color intensity activated. That means that color matching will be off, photo printing, high, and letter size paper. And we hit OK and print. OK, once the print is done, you basically repeat the same process. You let it dry. I'm going to let it dry for a couple of hours, just like the previous one. That makes for a better and more accurate final scan. So we'll be back when the second print is totally dry and we'll get ready to scan it. I'll go ahead and do that very quickly because you've already seen me do that and there's no need for you to really watch me do it twice. So I'll be back when I'm done with the process and then we'll go ahead and save it to an actual profile. And then we're going to go ahead and load up those two profiles, my profile that I did with a color management tool from Canon and the second profile that we just finished uh, creating up to iccview.com and compare the two. Okay, here we go. We have the second one done. Go ahead and scan it. No need to rehash what's taking place. I am clicking outside on the white area of the paper, going across each set of patches, and then releasing once I am beyond that particular row. In other words, I begin here. Once I am beyond, then I let go of the button. And it's going to be called Joe's Canon Pro 100 Pro Luster CM. Okay, that's it. Save it. Once the process is finished, right now it's crunching all of that information that it obtained from the scanning of the first print with the 50 color patches and then the scanning of the custom set of patches that it created and we are done. Okay. Okay, now that we have finished creating the profile, let me tell you one very important thing. A lot of the uh, profile readers or even utilities that allow you to print through ICC profiles will not print on profiles that are so-called version 4. And in order for you to avoid that, you need to set your preferences accordingly. You go to your file and then preferences on your color market software or any other X-Rite software. Once you are here, you're going to go ahead and choose version 2 instead of version 4. If you do version 4, the ICC view system that we're going to use to compare the two will not accept it. Make sure that you always use version 2. Okay, let's go over to ICC view. And here we go. Head over to Upload, Browse, and I have them on my desktop here. This is the one I made on the Canon tool. We'll upload that. We'll go ahead and find the new one we just finished creating. C Drive, Windows, Systems 32, Spool, Drivers, Color, and here it is, CM. Same name, but with CM added. We'll go ahead and copy it, and I'll just throw it over to my desktop. That way I don't have to maneuver. I have I have this defaulted for the desktop, so we'll go ahead and locate that one. Here it is. Okay, 
and upload it. And now for the moment of truth, we'll do the comparison between the two. Okay, here we have the Color Monkey software, and this is the one I made on the Canon tool. So the one that is displayed with wireframe is the Canon tool. The one that is solid is the Color Monkey version. And as you can see, very clearly here, remember the solid one is the one created in the Color Monkey. Which one extends further down into the dark most tones of the gamut? Obviously, this one, the one I made with the Canon tool. Remember, the solid one is the Color Monkey one, and it does not extend as far down as my Canon color management one does. Now, it does extend further on the greens, this, these greens here, the bluish colors, and some of the reds and yellows. You can see right here that it extends beyond the wireframe one. See wherever the wireframe extends, that is extra gamut. And this is quite a bit right here. That's quite a bit beyond. So blues and purplish colors, aquas, greens, yellow greens, dark yellows, dark oranges is where the Canon Management Tool Profile excels at. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at the color volume or the, the gamut volume. So here's Joe's Canon Pro 100 Pro Luster CM. 6,990,800 units as opposed to 7,580,953. So the clear winner is the one produced with the Canon tool. There's no doubt about that. Now, will this translate to a better print? Probably it would be very hard to discern. It depends on the image that you actually send to it. If the image you send to it has a complete range of tones from the blackest black, in other words, when you edited it, you actually set a pure black point and a pure white point, then yes, very likely this one will extend. In fact, the one with the color monkey extends further out into the lighter tones. So the Canon tool one will probably not do so well differentiating you know, the difference between the very, very last few steps that range between 250 and 255. As you can see, the solid extends beyond somewhat in some of these areas. Not in these areas here. It's actually quite, quite good. Okay, so I hope you can see the difference between the two. They do excel in certain areas. Both of them do. It's not like one is just totally better than the other. I really seriously doubt you might be able to see the difference. Printing a common image that has very few colors out of gamut, you should be able to see no difference. Uh, again, the difference that I always tend to see are the ones in the lower tones, and specifically bluish colors. Colors that tend to be toward the purple range, the blue range, dark greens, and so on. And the Canon one excels at the warm colors for some reason. That's the Canon OEM one which is kind of strange, but regardless of that, that's how this experiment has worked out. So anyway, all right, so the next video that I will produce will be taking both of these profiles and running them through an optimization process within the Color Monkey software and see if that works out. I will be using a standard image for the optimization and we'll see how that works out. Basically, the process is one sheet, one set of uh, color patches, print and scan. When you produce it, you want to give it a secondary name, something that will indicate that it is an optimized profile, in other words. Okay, so if you like this, please like. Don't forget to share. Please subscribe. And until the next time, happy printing. Bye-bye.